Mm. Greetings, fellow YouTubians. My name is Mike at Filmboy24, and as usual, thank you very, very much for tuning in. What are we going to do today? Well, I'm going to tell you. Today is all about Kodachrome. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to shoot Kodachrome 2, and we're going to shoot Kodachrome K40. Now, why did I pick Kodachrome 2 and K40? Well, that's really the only Kodachromes you have to choose from. They don't make this film stock anymore. In fact, I think they discontinued it in 05 and uh, processed the last roll somewhere around, I think, 2010, and I think someone will probably correct me on that. But uh, Introduced in the 30s, 35, I believe, Kodachrome. Introduced into the Super 8 market with Kodachrome 2 in 1965, lasted for just a few years until it was replaced by K40. It went through two or three, three I believe, four um, different processes, and then it was discontinued, which is a shame because stunning visuals. This is probably the most beautiful film I'd ever shot in my life. I shot a ton of this stuff in the 80s, and uh, it was cheap, and you could send it in, uh, it, just take it to Walmart, five bucks, develop, send it back, project, beautiful. At any rate, those days are gone. So, what do you do with it now? Well, now what I do with it is I shoot it and I process it as a black and white negative. Yes, I know you can process it as a black and white reversal, and that's probably preferred, but not by me, because I like to keep it simple. Um... It's much easier to process this as a negative and just scan it as it is to process it as a reversal and project it, although that's really beautiful. Beautiful. So if you can or like to, to do that, then go, by all means, go for it because I'm all for it and we'll get into that later. But for right now, we're trying to keep this simple and keep it low cost. So what we're going to do is we're going to shoot a roll of K or Kodachrome 2 that has a process before date of August 1972. Now you won't get this uh, Kodachrome 2 film to, to have a process before date much later than that. You, there are some that are a little later, but, but they discontinued this stuff. I believe it was in 72, so you may get some 75, 76, 77, but you won't get it into the 80s because by that time it was completely replaced by this. What I want to do is I want to go from one extreme to the other in terms of process before dates. So we go from August of 72, which means it was probably manufactured sometime in the 69, to March of 2004. Now, if you're lucky enough to get some, some Kodachrome K40 film that has a process before date sometime in the 2000s, then you have a way better chance of getting a really nice black and white image, or at least a pretty decent black and white image. I've had good luck with uh, stuff in the 2000s, 70s, 80s, 90s, yeah, so-so. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna see what the differences are. Now, obviously, I can't. I, I like to process two rolls of film at once. I can't do that with this more than likely unless my snip test tell me otherwise because I learned some time ago from my dear friend Martin Bumgarten who has no idea who I am that it's probably wise to do snip tests of this stuff so when you're done shooting it you take right off the end of the cart oh about a foot and you cut it in half and you just experiment in the dark with different times and temperatures until you get it right and then you've got the 49 feet of film that you can process properly and I have been doing that ever since for the most part now you can get close with three to five minutes and 68 degrees, but close really doesn't cut it when you're talking about all the nasty cloudiness and dense film that you typically will see when you try to develop Kodachrome as a negative or even probably as a reversal, even though I don't really do that. So without uh, too much further ado, let's get into what we will be shooting this film with today. Now, Mike, how come you're not using your simple run and gun camera that you love to go to all of the time? Well, I'm not using that one because Kodachrome is light hoggish. Very light hoggish. This old Kodachrome really needs light, light, light. So you already want to uh, stop your cameras down. You know, you want to you give in a few stops with this stuff. In other words, if it's... Uh, uh, 
instead of rating this at 40, you want to rate this probably at about 25, maybe even 10. I will probably rate both of these somewhere in the 10 range. I might even go five on this one. We'll see. Um, I can't do that with my run and gun camera. All I have here is my backlight correction. Well, that's not going to that's not going to give me the four stops that I need on this stuff. So I have to revert to my Shinon Pacific 200 slash 8XL. This is one of my favorite cameras. I, I think I even prefer this over. I have a few of these um, Canon 1014. Um, XLS cameras and those are fun and they're nice and they're cute and whatever but I actually like this camera a lot I've been shooting this camera for years or these types of cameras for years and I'm a huge Shinon fan so we're gonna try this one with these two rolls simply because uh, you can really adjust the exposure on this as opposed to uh, my, my run and gun cam so without further ado uh, let's get Kodachrome in Come on, super aiders. Super eight spraiders. Come on, super. Come on, spraiders. You're all spraiders. Super aiders. Come on, spraiders. Let's go do this. Okay, so here I am at one of my favorite all time shooting locations. Where is that, Mike? It's in my backyard. That's right, my backyard. What we're going to do instead of, uh, you know, showing you every single thing that I shoot. We're just gonna shoot it. But let me give you some ideas. Okay. I got a swing set for my little ones. Some flowers and trees. Some big trees. That's about it. Some dead grass. And first step, let's add our Rimjet Remover Formula, secret formula, washing soda and baking soda. And after about five or six minutes, which is how much time has elapsed, we dump. And in this case, it's pretty clear. Let me put it over here so you can see it. And this is just uh, tap temperature, about 74 degrees, something like that, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a little tint to it, a little blue tint. Step two-ish, we are going to process, and we need to be around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. We are at... Well, pretty much right there. This particular roll is going to process for two minutes according to our snip test. So as I'm pouring, I start the timer. Let's give it a little agitation for about 15 seconds. Give it a little booga booga. Whoa, that was loud. This is uh, just my little, this is one of those uh, Rubbermaid shelf bracket thing or shelving units that works perfect to keep my tank atop my sink. I had an issue with it before. I just did this last week. I had an issue with it actually kind of um, tipping off into the sink. And it's a very simple, about $8 solution. So as you can see, I'm just filling it back into the bottle. Backed up to my one liter mark. Put it aside. Let's give it a quick stop rinse. And I just use tap water for that because this is just an experiment. Let's get that water out of there. You really want to make sure you get all the water out of there. I think I told you that before. If you've watched my loading the Lomo tank video, you really want to kind of wiggle it around and get all that water out of there. You don't want to dilute your chemicals any more than you have to. And let's get fixing.
we're coming up on our six minute mark here, as you can see with my timer. Now this step here, I usually rinse for about eight to 10 minutes. And I don't always just leave the water running constantly. I kind of feel bad about doing that. So I will um, kind of lift up the hose a little bit, let it fill, or let it sit, agitate then dump it and do it again. Okay, we're about six or seven minutes in to the rinse and I figured I would go ahead and take, at this point you can take the lid off. Your film is fully developed. So I will take the white tape off. And let's see what we are looking like. Now remember, Again, if you've seen if you've seen my video, I know it's dark, but if you have seen my video uh, regarding the loading of the tank, I tell you to it's really important to wash your tank, and you can see why. I mean, this rim jet woo, gets everywhere, but that's actually a good sign. That that's the sign that it's coming off. So let's kind of take a take a look at where we're at. I have very good lighting in here. You can see the film in there. Spooled in still nicely. Let's get the water going again. Back in it. All right, our film has been developed. The rim jet has been mostly removed, hopefully, or at least softened enough so it'll be easy to remove. So now we will just simply drain the rinse water, remove the reel. going to replace the top and then what I do is I actually just unscrew the center post and I flip the top reel over because the top reel has this little flange on it I flip it over replace and then you find the end of your film which is right here just helps it to come out a lot easier this way so it's not scraping when it comes out and there we have it little rimjet remnant now that's all going to be removed in this final step for rimjet final removal you're going to need or at least i use two empty super 8 reels and i'll show you why in just a second you take one you turn your water on sort of a fast trickle and i always clean the end of the film Pull it onto the first reel. And then sort of give it a wipe between two fingers as you're spooling back up onto a reel. And on this side, you literally just twist your film as you go. And you rinse and you pull. And you will get a little bit of remjet. If you did a good job at the remjet removal and you know it's hit and miss, but it, it, sometimes you get real lucky, like looks time, looks like this time we got real lucky, and a lot of that remjet came off in the initial um, remjet removal bath. So I'm not getting a whole lot of it on my fingers. Let's move down the reel a little bit and see. Yeah, we're getting some. You will always get some, but that's what this final step is for. You want to get the rest of the rimjet off of the film. So I'm going to go through this process and I'll show you what we use the other reel for here in just a minute. Okay, we are at the end of our reel. So we just pull it out, get the last little bit of rimjet off of the end of the film, like so. And you're probably going to want to cut the end of this off anyway. You can see where it was um, locked into the cartridge. And now we move on to our final step. All right, final step. We are going to plug the sink, put a little water in it, take a little dish detergent, just a little, a couple of drops, take our freshly wound film, toss it in here, kind of whisk it around a little bit. Now. The dish soap is sort of acting as the, uh, <clears throat> the agent for no water spots. It cleans the film a little and no water spots after it's dry. 
does the same, it serves the same purpose as photo flow. And if I were using a roll of film that uh, was really important to me, I'd probably use photo flow. Although I've never really noticed a big difference between the two. And then I just let it sit for a couple of seconds there. And then we take our second empty reel. We take the end of the film, sort of clean it off a little, and we feed it onto the reel. And then I hook it to a rewind, and I take my finger, and I just hold the film, just like so, and I wind. And I sort of squeegee that film in between my thumb and first finger, and wind it right onto the other reel. And once that's finished, pop it off the rewind, squeegee the end, roll it up, and we go hang it to dry. I'm back in my drying room, which is my two daughters' bathroom, but it's much bigger than mine, so we're going to use it. And we hook the film, just like so. Now, ideally, you'd probably run your shower uh, hot water and let it steam in here a little bit before you do this. But, as you know, I'm not an ideal person. I'm just going to hang it and hope, and the steam would help get the dust out of the air. But we're just going to hang it, clip by clip. Now, with these clips, it doesn't actually touch the surface of the film. It only touches the edges. And the last one just clips on. And I think I'm out of frame on this last one, but let me see if I can just show you. It just clips on just like the first one did. And hangs on just like that. It pulls it over. And that's it. Now we just let it dry. So your film is hanging to dry. What a perfect opportunity to clean your tank. Now your sink should already be full of dish soap, so let's just drop the parts in there. Add a little warm water maybe, take your tank scrubbers and your tank sponge and scrub. Scrub the grooves and get all that rim jet out of there. I don't know if it ever would actually harm the tank, but it sure is ugly. And that's all there is to it. Processed both rolls of film and I did some snip tests and determined that the Kodachrome 2, which I really don't like, I never have liked it and you'll see why in one minute. Um, the best determination I could make was just like two minutes at 68 degrees. This I did for six minutes at 68 degrees and I'm not a fan of Kodachrome 2. I think I talked about that earlier. I've never had good luck with it and without getting into a whole bunch of details it's just too old uh, let me show you why I don't like it this is the results of my test from Kodachrome See what I mean? That's why I don't like Kodachrome 2. That's the kind of results I get almost every time I shoot it, and I try and try and try. And I've processed it with uh, several different developers. I've used um, Caffinol, I've used HC110, like you just saw, I've used D76, D19. I just don't have any luck with it. And no matter, I've used different times and temperatures, I just never have good luck with Kodachrome 2. So I try very hard not to shoot it, but I do have some, so I want to get rid of it so now k40 expired in 2004 why don't we take a look and see how that turned out
why I like K40. Now this I've also processed at a lot of different times and temperatures, different, uh, I've used caffeinol, I've used um, D76, D19, I've used a lot of HC110 because that's my go-to. Um, and now you see why I really like it. It comes out pretty darn well. If you, if you, if you take your time with it, um, you know, it's a little splotchy. It's a little bit, um, there's a little bit of cloudiness in there. And all of that is, is probably from the way I process it. You know, it's not an exact science for me. And anytime you're doing home processing, it's never going to look quite as good as a, a professional lab, but man, it's so much fun. So if you're not processing your own film, you should be. And with that, I hope everybody had a good time. I hope you learned something. If you did, please hit that like button. Subscribe, leave me a comment, hit the bell notification so you know every single time I post a new video. And until next time, Spraders, see you on the next go around.